Okay, so Unreal Fest 2024, a showcase for new epic technology. And uh, we got to see a new technology called Megalites, which looks quite intriguing. Now, Alex, sure. you've got to talk us through this one because it's it's certainly uh, quite impactful, right? Mm -hmm. So the uh, what Megalites is trying to solve is the fact that in uh, rasterized graphics, the you can have um, a lot of lights, but the conceit is shadowing them, making them shadowed lights is very expensive because you have to render the entire scene from the from the lights perspective to get the shadow map. Uh, and uh, there's just a hard limit on performance for that. If you think about it, it'd be like having, if you have hundreds of shadow casting lights, that means hundreds of separate rendering cameras throughout the world, not rendering textures and things like that, but they're rendering something from the perspective of that you know that shadow casting light uh and that doesn't scale up at all so ray tracing as a as a competitor technology would make that cheaper because you're not having to re-render the whole scene you're just re you're just kind of bouncing a ray around the scene to see whether or not it sees a light or not uh and <clears throat> the issue with that with ray tracing is that uh you have to send out a lot of rays so how do you know where to see whether or not one pixel's in shadow or not. You have to send out a lot of rays. So there's been a variety of ray tracing technologies that have come up to sample lights in a better way. One of them that we've talked a lot about on the channel before is Reister, which NVIDIA terms as RTXDI, and we've seen in a number of uh, titles on PC. We've covered it most recently in uh, Star Wars Outlaws, where you can see in that game, it makes it so every single light in the scene is shadow casting, and it also adds in new light sources altogether new area light sources, for example. That's the, the grounds of things. The Unreal Engine 5 does not support RTXDI or Reister by default. And what this video shows that they brought out originally, we can talk about also the whole stream quality thing. They showed it off on this 1080p stream over YouTube, 60 FPS stream. And what it shows is the game running on PlayStation 5 at some unknown resolution and frame rate we'll talk about later. Um, where they go through a scene and they show off now through using something called mega lights, they can so have it so that uh, they don't say every single light, but they say basically like thousands of lights in a scene can now be considered shadow casting. And if they go through the, this uh, interesting trailer, you'll see in through through most of the scene, they're, like in the beginning of it, they're showing off particular types of lights, area lights, uh, which are hard to get shadows from because it's not. Light isn't emanating from a point there, but it's emanating from an entire surface. So one, so the area, usually the shadows from that are very diffuse and they have a shape to them that is unique. Uh, those are hard to render and actually impossible to render with <laughs> rasterization. Um, but later on the trailer, they go to this like market area and they show that a bunch of lights on and it kind of looks like I would say a current generation game in that moment. But then they switch on mega lights which uh, changes the entire rendering pass for forward direct lighting. And you get a bunch of shadows in the environment that weren't there before. And it's very interesting because it's actually a huge difference, I would say, in like side-by-side -side visual quality. Um, and they're showing it running on a PlayStation 5. And technologies like Reister are very expensive to render. Um, they just have like a flat cost that is high in spite of being way faster than the rasterization alternative. So Epic here is doing something very bespoke in particular for what uh, to get it to run on PlayStation 5. And I think there's a lot I can say about that, actually. Um, but we kind of got a sense about how it's rendering on PlayStation 5. I think when they sent us a higher quality version of that feed, that 1080p60 feed, it was actually like super high quality. Uh, but then they also released like a 30 second sizzle reel of a recording running also what appears to be on PlayStation 5 uh, that is also 60 FPS and you get to see some more of the limitations I would see there than that initial stream where the stream was like really blocky and smudgy and not very good quality at all uh, but then when it's actually at like a, a, a higher output quality you can see where the shortcuts are coming in and I think Rich you noticed some things in there right? Um, yeah, that's uh, interesting. It was, um, how do you describe it? it? There's certain things in there that were reminiscent to me of what we saw in like the Cyberpunk 2077 past facing mm -hmm. 
typically accumulation um, across frames. The lighting seemed to transition quite slowly, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It's sort of uh, very sort of typical of Vista. Also, it's kind of like a, a, a sort of grainy effect to it. Yeah. So you can see the trades that are being made, and I think you can understand that there's, um, uh, you know, it's it's still experimental. Uh, frame rate also, I think you you pointed out that it's kind of in a, a weird thirty to thirty five <laughs> fps no man's land generally. It's weird uh, decision for it to be showcased that way, but yeah, it is for some reason. <laughs> yeah, but you know what can you say? The uh, the the visual impact is astonishing, and as you know, first iteration of this work, it's highly promising. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We um, do get some details after the fact. I asked behind the scenes as well as there's a post by Andrew Lordson on Beyond 3D when he was asked about it. It is not using Restore directly, but it is using a way of sampling lights that is going to be adjacent to it, to similar right. research there. Um, it's probably just cheaper. Uh Another thing that we know from other investigations is that the default setting, and this is probably actually different even on PlayStation 5, is that it's uh, sending rays at half resolution of internal resolution. Mm. Uh, that's something that Reister doesn't do, for example. Uh, NVIDIA always wants uh, those kind of things done at full res um, just to fit in better with their denoisers. Uh, another thing that was interesting to see from the trailer as well too is that i did count it it is uh in many parts just 1080p internal resolution uh i think that is obvious and kind of like the, the overall like pixel perfectness of the trailer um but the as they get towards the end of it when the main character walks in this hallway this like elevator that kind of ascends i think at the end and a lot of lights turn on and this like circular i don't know atrium i don't know what to even call it um you can see that they as the lights turn on at the very end of it there's a lot of things like rich was talking about like light lag and the denoiser failing so you see a lot of um like larger scale noise it like blows up the noise actually to be like large um one thing you can see is that as all the lights turn on if you look at the floor there's these hanging kind of spherical lights and from a lot of them, I think it's like the first, the first maybe four or five or six lights on left or right side, you can actually see there's a specular reflection beneath them. But from the ones beyond that, you cannot see the specular reflection beneath them. And uh, the reasons for that might be that there's some sort of, due to the way lights are sampled, that there there's a hard cutoff, like within like a certain distance from the camera, or the noise is too high from those lights in the distance so that the denoiser is actually killing the specularity from them. And the interesting part about this is this is them showing it on PS5, but they also sent us screenshots of what the PS, the PC version of Mega Lights looks like. And in that scene, you can see actually that there's no such limitation for the lights in the distance on the floor. You can see the specular lights sheen from all the lights in the room. So they are showing it often in an interesting optimized form uh, on PlayStation 5 there. I guess one thing I'm curious about this, and I would ask this into the, the the planar discussion here, is is this something that will actually ship in games uh, at the promised uh, levels that Epic says it will, maybe? I know it's experimental right now, but kind of go to uh, the uh, the Matrix demo that we saw years back. And honestly, I know games take a long time to develop, but... Hardware Lumen is pretty much a no-show on console, uh, and that yeah. demo was all about Hardware Lumen, right? Um, the the promises at the beginning of the generation that UE5 games would also be 60 FPS in some capacity, I feel like hasn't been borne out in a good way. I don't think other no. than Fortnite. Or- <laughs> you saw it? Yep. Jusant, yeah, which we can all talk about why those are 60 FPS experiences. That's pretty <laughs> obvious. Um, but yeah, like, what do you guys think about this? Like, what's your opinion, Oliver? Uh, I thought it was really a stunning demo. I think it's a lot like R- RTX DI, but like you said, I mean, the performance level is high enough for console use, which opens up a lot of cases that weren't uh, possible before because ultimately you don't really want to build a game around requiring this kind of high level of RT fidelity everywhere to look good right um Mm -hmm. because you're gonna have to ship that on console but i think one possible 
problem here and just kind of like looking at it maybe alex you could comment on this but it kind of does seem like you'd maybe need to build a game around this a little bit because like when you start to look at the level of quality that you need for like the bvh to do shadows right. like all this direct lighting all these shadows you kind of can't get away with the same simplifications and the same compromises you'd use for like gi let's say or maybe for reflections where you're overlaying a lot of that screen space information you don't need the highest quality assets there um i think that's maybe a constraint that you need to have in mind to build a game around and i do kind of wonder like you have this obviously it's an experimental feature but like you look at this and you think okay well already it's like 1080p 30 not great image quality on console in kind of a more, maybe a more, you know, carefully crafted environment here to actually get that in a full shipping game where you're actually building it around this kind of feature. Maybe that's not something that we're going to see too often uh, in this generation. Right. Personally, I'm kind of more invested. Like I think Megalites is a really cool demo. I think it looks amazing, but I'm personally like more interested in what Epic is talking about with hardware lumen optimizations on console to hit 60 FPS. Like that to me is more exciting, could potentially be applied to projects that are in development, not just projects that might start development now that are built around certain uh, lighting technologies, at least from what I can tell, right? Um, right? And that could possibly give you a big fidelity boost to a project that might get released in like 2026 or something possibly, right? that right. is in progress today they're using software lumen they're not happy with the performance or they're not happy with the visual fidelity there but they need it for the performance now all of a sudden they can adopt hardware lumen at maybe 30 fps or maybe even 60 fps and get a really good result on the consoles so that's really what i'm more invested in from this unreal showcase but for sure you look at this and it's like wow this is like insane it's running on a console it looks outrageous but it's also like this is kind of a demo i think <laughs> you know ultimately yeah, I agree yeah. with everything you said there. I think this is more an interesting future proof of concept for something that will be shipping in like um, PS6 games, more or less, um, due to just the things that you mentioned, uh, the, the lack of image quality there, the fact that you need to build a game around it. One very important thing to talk about this demo is that there aren't, a, they don't showcase the kind of killer scenario. And that's the reason why NVIDIA has ray reconstruction is where they just show like a light and like moving characters and a light moves and the character moves at the same time. Denoisers are gonna go, they're probably gonna do that really badly because there's there's just like a fight to keep things good looking and then as soon as they start move moving all the the heuristics that say let's try and make this pixel look good are thrown out the window and you get all this either noise or extreme light lag and ghosting and that's why nvidia has ray reconstruction and that's something that enables rtx di to actually work really well i would say in the mod in modern games it's a big boost towards its image quality and that wouldn't be available here and i think it could break a lot of scenes uh, presuming they don't have some sort of magical breakthrough into noising <laughs> in the next two years or something like that. Um, so yeah, there's that. I I am also of your opinion that along, uh, yeah, just to say it, on the sidelines in different parts of this uh, presentation and this Unreal Fest, they descri describe the fact they are optimizing hardware lumen to uh, better focus on when they say getting up to 60 hertz, what they're talking really about is actually getting that like CPU performance up and some of the GPU performance as well there too, but really CPU performance in UE5 with hardware lumen isn't the greatest. And there's a lot of optimizations going on there to bring it up, which then could enable things like better performance overall for using hardware lumen, as well as enabling the concept that you can maybe target 60 hertz on console with hardware lumen. Uh, to the point where now UE 5.5 will default when you start it up to using the hardware lumen path, which is something it didn't do before. You had to enable it separately in the settings and no one did that. That's why almost every game shifts with <laughs> software lumen. Um, yeah, so there, there's that. I, I think this is an interesting proof of concept demo, uh, but it obviously, there's enough corner cutting in there that I think when you look at it, it's hard to imagine a game being designed around it um uh, at the moment so i would say this is really cool future tech and i'm really excited to see what it means on next gen uh, hardware at the moment uh more so than current gen mm -hmm. yeah i think i agree with that and also just generally it's <laughs> in terms of the current sort of roadmap of unreal engine 5 all eyes are on the coalition yes right uh, <laughs> here's e-day to see just 
you know, what the best in the business can do with this technology. And uh, I think we've all got very, very high expectations there.